everybody, uh, it's Dr. Wafa and today we are going to talk about non-prep laminates. Uh, when we are talking about non-prep laminate, we should uh, know that uh, the decision between non-prep laminate, minimally prep laminate and uh, regular laminate should be done on a uh, base that is uh, color changing needs uh, thickness, enough thickness or not. In most cases, we do the non-prep laminates for fractured incisal edge or for a little bit uh, color change. And I myself prefer minimally prepped laminate, but sometimes the patient doesn't allow you to uh, shave the teeth. In this case we are going to use minimally prep laminates. Okay as you can see we are going to use four axes and lithium disilicate and put the minimum thickness uh, to the least amount that our milling or printer can print and that amount is between 0.2 and 0.3. Actually by myself I prefer 0.3. But be sure that uh, it's a tough work. Ca uh, in case that you use ingot injection, the most of the time you have misinjection, and in case that you are going to mill it, you will have the chipped uh, laminates. So uh, be sure that your milling has ability to mill uh, something at point two, and choose the right material, like Siltra do. They claim that they could do it at 0.2 millimeters. Okay, after choosing proper milling and proper material, we are going to uh, draw the margin lines. Uh, drawing margin lines in incisal and cervical are almost easy, but in mesial and distal, uh, we should take care that in case that two marginal uh, lines hit each other your laminates will collide and in case that they have too much space you should fill the space with composites and uh, it's not stable for a long time. So first we are going to uh, put the laminates with a space between them and do the margins at far place from each other. Let's see what's happened and then we change the margins to proper place. Okay. In this case we should take care of a gingiva and uh, the gingiva should be in a healthy position because in case that you do the surgery or laser or something else on the gingiva and do the impression one or two weeks later you have uh, unhealed gingiva and you cannot uh, point out where the margins should be but in case that you let the margins heal it can be uh, have good uh, results and stable results. So it preferred that let the gingiva heals for two months, not one week, not two weeks, for two months. And after that you will see the gingiva is looking good and you can find every detail, every margin properly. Uh, another important thing is uh, when you are going to put the margins on incisal edge, you shouldn't go too far lingually. Why we shouldn't do that? Because uh, in case that you are going too far lingually, you will have a leap in the lingual. And it has two problems. First of all, many of uh, milling machines can't mill that and it will have tremendous effect on your final results. And the second is that you will be uh, limited for insertion direction. 
Okay, and what I mean about limiting the insertion direction, as you can see, we have some uh, undercuts in mesial and distal. And uh, when you have lip in lingual, you should uh, choose your insertion direction incisally. But in this case, I prefer to use buccal insertion direction, and it helps me to reduce the undercuts and see a little bit here why uh, undercuts are dangerous for us because the software has two different scenario one scenario is to block out the undercut and your laminate will have a space over there and you should fill the space with cement or composite or whatever else that you are using to fix the laminates and uh, Another scenario is uh, to put the laminates in contact with teeth and of course when you have undercut you should shave the teeth or you should adjust the laminate and none of them is or gold but it depends on your idea and your decisions about how to prepare the teeth and actually I prefer to shave the teeth a little bit in uh, especially in the line angles so I don't encounter any kind of undercut in the mesial and distal okay let's go ahead we are going for cement gap in this case we use uh, 0.05 cement gap of 50 microns at uh, most part and at the margin 20 microns at the margin it depends on many items including the surface roughness of your teeth including uh, what kind of milling is used including uh, your taper and kind of to shaving that you done but I prefer the least amount okay we are going for to use a different tooth model actually in non prep laminates the tooth model doesn't uh, have a big role in final results because uh, we have limited space and the anatomy comes with the teeth by itself uh, is not so important and we should do the anatomy by ourselves at the final stage like uh, hand wax up that we do and uh, in case that you're going to be a professional designer you should use cut view or other uh, and other professional tools the cut view shows you uh, how much material is on the teeth and in the non prep laminate like this in case that you make thick laminates uh, it doesn't look good on the teeth on the patient's mouse so we should be aware that uh, the least amount of the material is the best amount and as and as I mentioned before, we should be able to do that. Okay, now we are turning off the cast and the minimum thickness and check the alignment of the tooth. Oh my gosh, look what we have. In this part, we see that the alignments are not good and we change the alignment so it gets better results and so uh, when we finish the work we have beautiful aligned teeth okay beautiful okay so step by step our teeth gets better position and when we're done on the position, we let this uh, software calculate how it should look like. 
And most of the time the anatomy uh, gets different when the software calculations are done. Now we, sh uh, we should do the rest by hand and we cannot rely on ExoCAD or TreeShape or whatever else we are using because they have some limitation on design and the anatomy, the developmental grooves and other uh, things that make a TIS beautiful are not uh, completely defined in the software. Once again I'm going to change the margins and as you see uh, we have a big gaps between the teeth. It doesn't look good when you're doing the laminates. Uh, you have two choices, fill them with cement or resin composite or uh, give them uh, uh, free space and none of them is our goal. So when we have ability to change this kind of flow, we should do that. Okay. Okay, as you can see, the space is getting better and better and it's look far better than what uh, was before. I do the same on other tools. We have two different methods of changing the margins. Edit, as you can see here, and create line, as you can see before on two number one, two. Okay, and also here, we change the margins to get better results. Now we are going back to the wizard mode. Sometimes you need to do the job on export mode, sometimes you need to do the job on uh, wizard mode, but uh, we should take uh, in our mind that the both modes uh, works together and sometimes we need one of these two steps. Okay, the margins are look good. But the two alignment is a little bit adjustments, small alignments. Okay, beautiful. As you can see, the mesial incisal angle, mesial incisal angle, is not uh, as sharp as the neighbor. Sometimes we should do uh, the minimum thickness by hand because the software uh, going to enforce the anatomy and uh, when enforcing the anatomy the minimal thickness is not uh, in mind. So we should do it by ourselves and take care of the anatomy. Sorry, I'm yawning because I have a little sleep last night. Okay, and the inside the angles get similar and as you can see the mesial incisor angle on the central incisors gets far better. As you can see the margins are not set completely inside because I told you we have problem with seating and the problem with the milling machines. Okay so we are so close to minimal thickness and In this case, 
with the less than one millimeter diameter the, the results could be beautiful results also it could cover one or two grades of Vita shade like A3 to A2 or A2 to A1 not anymore but I advise you not to change the color in case that the tooth comes with the A2 you use the A2 veneers in case that your patient accept that because the most of the patients come for the color change and we should mention them in case that you are going to have color change no problem in it is not your goal and you should choose another kind of laminate maybe conventionally prepared laminate not even minimally prepared laminate okay as I told you the anatomy will be ruined in this kind of laminate so we make some developmental grooves and then we fade them so we have very little effect of them it helps us to have more anatomic more beautiful design and in this case we have a uh, young patient so we are not going too far and we are not going to make uh, cervical attrition lines but in case that you are making it this kind of laminate for an old guy it's better to add some cervical recession lines or some extra features and beautiful now I cut the intersection so the laminate doesn't uh, shouldn't collide to each other but still the line angles are not uh, as beautiful as it should be uh, I'm going to through a smile so I could see whether it looks fine or not and again I'm going to make developmental grooves and other anatomy features that I think make it more uh, natural and beautiful and in the meantime I also consider the minimum thickness so I do this for two reasons first anatomy second minimal thickness and we should take bear in mind that the bows are important for us also we should uh, talk with the patient about the limitation as you can see number one two and two two are not identical because the gingival zenith are different so in this case we are limited to the gingival zenith and uh, we cannot do anything until the patient goes back to the office do the surgery like crown length or laser and come back and let's go back to the design we are going to for final parts as you can see number two two uh, has problem with the incisal angle incisal edge and it was kind of worn incisal edge but because I told you that we have a young patient we preferred number one two over the two two and uh, we changed the incisal angle okay okay everybody everything is done we have beautiful laminates of course the job is not done because we have lots of other stuff to do uh, milling or uh, injection for this laminates are so so uh, breathtaking because they are so thin 